Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indusar Education. Um, we continue talking about units of measurements in physics, and uh, today we will measure temperature. Uh, this lecture is part of the course called uh, Physics for Teens, presented on unizor.com. Um, there is uh, a lot of sense actually to watch this lecture from the website, uh, even if you found it somewhere on YouTube or wherever. Uh, the website is more friendly in, um, when, in, in a very important aspect. It has textual um, component, so there is a video component and there is a textual component right next to each other. So um, after you watch the video you can uh, read the text basically, it's like a textbook. Or vice versa, <coughs> whatever the sequence you prefer. Um, now, there is a prerequisite course, uh, which is called Math for Teens on the same website. Um, I definitely, Math is definitely needed for uh, studying physics, and I do suggest you to uh, either take this course or familiarize yourself with all the necessary mathematical tools for physics. Uh, also, there is a very important lecture which was before um, this one uh, as part of this course. Now, there is a chapter called Energy um, in the Physics 14 course, and you can find it by basically go going to unizor.com, opening Physics 14, uh, 14's menu, and you will see Energy as a chapter. In that chapter, there is a topic called Molecular Movement, and in that topic, if you will follow, if you will open that uh, uh, second level menu, you will find the lecture temperature, uh, pressure, and volume of ideal gas. Ideal gas is a very important substance to uh, basically um, to study, and uh, whatever we will talk about um, about temperature and how to measure it. Well, it's actually measured towards certain constants related to ideal gas, you will see. But, <coughs> but there is uh, an introduction of certain laws which combine pressure, volume and temperature of ideal gas. And these laws are presented in that lecture. So that lecture is actually a prerequisite for the one which we are talking about today. Okay, so that's all uh, introduction, and now the real uh, talk about temperature and how to measure it. First of all, what is temperature? Temperature is a measure of um, kinetic energy of molecules. Uh, if it's water, or if it's uh, air, or if it's a uh, piece of metal, whatever it is, the way how molecules are moving inside that body, maybe maybe not moving, maybe oscillating at some, at, at some frequency. If, if it's a metal, they're not really moving very much, uh, but they are oscillating. So this is kinetic uh, energy. So molecules have kinetic energy. And the greater the temperature uh, means the molecules are moving much faster. So, <coughs> if we assign temperature of zero, so we will come up with a scale where the temperature equals to zero when there is no movement of molecules at all. It's called absolute zero. Well, I mean, it's obviously practically impossible to do under uh, our conditions, but somewhere up in the uh, space far from all kinds of stars uh, from all kinds of sources of energy body by itself will actually emit all the temperature outside as a radiation and it will remain at absolute zero temperature the molecules will stop moving so again we will start with assigning a temperature equals to zero to a state of the object when movements 
uh, is not really present. Movement of all the molecules inside that object is not present. That's absolute zero. Now, then, after that, no matter what kind of a unit of measurement of the temperature we will choose, the temperature will be proportional to average kinetic energy of the molecules. So, to have a scale, to measure something, we need the zero and we need a unit. So zero we have basically agreed upon. Zero is absolute zero when there is no movement of molecules. Now, what is a scale, I mean, what is the unit actually of measurement? Um, until very recently, the unit of measurement in most of the countries was um, the Celsius uh, system. Now, Celsius system is assigning zero temperature, zero degree, this little sign is a degree, of uh, melting ice and a hundred degrees Celsius is boiling water. Now, that's fine. I mean, there is another scale which is customary in the United States as a Fahrenheit, and there is a connection between Fahrenheit and Celsius, which I will talk about a little later. So these both systems are used in the world. Mostly it's Celsius, uh, Celsius is all in all bas basically in all countries, and in the United States, and I don't know where else, is Fahrenheit. Fine. So that's how we established a unit of measurement. So it's one hundredth of difference between temperature of boiling water and melting ice. This is my unit. This is one degree which we can measure the temperature. So we have an absolute zero as the beginning of the scale and we have a unit one hundredth degree of the difference between these two temperature and that's sufficient to basically assign a temperature to any uh, state of object no matter what this object is. And this is so-called Kelvin scale. So Kelvin scale is absolute zero Kelvin. By the way, in Kelvin we don't use the uh, this degree sign. So this is a temperature of uh, the body with no movement of molecules inside and one degree Kelvin is equal to one degree Celsius. That's the same thing, the same unit we're using. That was until recently. <coughs> now, recently, as I was uh, talking about in previous lectures, there is a tendency to assign units of uh, measurements in physics related to some kind of world constants, physical constants, which we really think are constants. And, uh, well, why? Because, you see, these temperature, it's not really very easy to establish standard. I mean, what kind of a water is this? How pure it is? Or ice? It's not really very precise, as the precision right now is very important nowadays, at the level of our current development of industry and science, etc. So we need something more precise. Now, so, to, to connect it to some kind of physical um, uh, constant, we really need some kind of a law from which we can actually start. And here comes the law which I have presented in the lecture, which I was talking about in the very beginning as a prerequisite. It's a relationship between pressure of ideal gas, volume of ideal gas, it's absolute Kelvin temperature in the scale of Kelvin, which means absolute zero is where absolute zero is, and the degree is the same as Celsius. So the law I'm talking about is this one. N is number of molecules. P is the pressure. Now, how the pressure is measured? 
well, pressure is the force per unit of area, right? So pressure measured in a uh, force which is uh, Newton and the measure of uh, area is square meter. Now, Newton in turn is actually kilogram meter to a second square. Now we have a square meter, meter and meter cancels. So pressure is kilogram divided by meter and second square. Kilogram and second and meter has already been have already been defined before as units based on certain constants. That's in the previous lectures before that. I put my lectures in in, in, in logical dependency actually. So we define new uh, units of measurement based on some other management and uh, measurements and some constants. Okay, V volume. Volume is uh, measured in meters cube, right? Now, here we have number of molecules, which is uh, just just a number. There is no kind of a units of measurements. Now, what is KB? KB is a Boltzmann constant. Again, I did talk about Boltzmann constant in this lecture about uh, uh, temperature, uh, pressure, volume of uh, ideal gas. So this is the law we will base our um, definition of temperature. Now, uh, the using the old uh, Kelvin scale, so the old temperature and pressure and volume, and this is number of molecules, the constant was defined basically experimentally as 1.380649 10 to the minus 19 of uh, yes so this is the constant now this constant was defined basically was determined experimentally and uh, obviously it's not exactly this because these are kind of old physical um, uh, units of measurement the temperature especially. So, what the physicists did to define the temperature now? Well, they just said, okay, let's postulate. We will just assign this is the constant and we will define the temperature degrees, that te temperature unit, in such a way that this law actually is true with this exactly this constant. In. So, so now its temperature is defined based on this. So if you want to determine what's the temperature, we have to know what's the pressure, what's the volume, what's the number of molecules. And this we already have defined as this exact number, and that's how we get the temperature. So this is the same reverse logic as we used before. From the constant, we define the unit of measurements of the temperature. Okay, basically, that's it. We have defined the unit, and now let's go back and define all other units. Now, we have uh, melting ice as 273.15 units of Kelvin's, Kelvin scale. Boiling water is plus 100. Again, it's all uh, from the definition. And as far as Fahrenheit and how to determine it, well, that's a different thing. Um, if you have a Fahrenheit, then Celsius is actually Fahrenheit minus 32 times 5 nans 
and uh, if you want to find out uh, Fahrenheit temperature from Celsius, uh, it's correspondingly nine fifths of the temperature in Celsius plus 32, which is 1.8 degrees of Celsius plus 32. And Celsius in turn is basically Kelvin plus uh, minus. No, Kelvin is equal. Kelvin is equal Celsius. minus 273.15 K. So these are conversions basically. Look, okay, and Celsius is equal to Kelvin plus 273.15 K. Uh, 15, just 15. Okay, so these are just very simple formulas which are related from the fact that temperature of ice at some point before melting ice was zero and from this we have determined that absolute zero was minus 273.15 in Celsius. So, I, wait a moment, I think I made a mistake. It's the other way around. Kelvin plus Celsius is Kelvin plus. No, that's correct. Yeah, it's correct. So Kelvin zero plus 273. So melting ice is 273. Right, that's correct. So basically these are simple formulas which are converging one into another temperature. But most importantly, the uh, unit of measurement in the Kelvin scale, which is the scale w w used by scientists. It's not really very convenient in, in real uh, everyday life, because you can say basically, okay, the temperature of, let's say, 20 degrees Celsius, it's actually uh, 293.15 Kelvin. It's not very convenient. I mean, we prefer something simpler, right? But whatever it is. Um, if it's not convenient, but physicists are using Kelvin degree because it's part of the formula which is basically uh, gives the laws of dependency between pressure and volume and temperature, etc. So scientifically speaking, we are using Kelvin. Practically, we are using Celsius and Fahrenheit in the United States. Um, well, that's it. Now that's uh, one of the lectures about uh, units and I will have a couple of more and that would be all about so-called base units. And again, I would like you to very um, to, to, pay, to pay a lot of attention the the whole philosophy of units of measurements units must depend on certain absolute objective physical constants rather than certain um, kind of devices which we are using to, 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 to establish the standards. Like in the case of a kilogram we had a little like cylinder which we have, okay this is a kilogram. No, we are basing, right now we are basing our um, units of measurement on some objective physical constants which exist in the world and uh, do not depend on, on our actions, at least as we see them now as not being dependent, at least to the degree that we have, uh, we have the knowledge about, about all this. All right. Um, again, this is a very short and very simple lecture. I mean, there is nothing actually to explain or anything. It's a definition. Definitions are not really explained. It's a definition, right? So, um, you can read the textual part of this lecture on the unizor.com um, and uh, 
Well, basically, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.